Hello everyone, today we will be learning about salts and also how to classify them into acidic, basic and neutral and we'll be learning about factors that affect its acidity. Let's start off with basic salts here. Basic salts, they contain a conjugate base. So for example, X minus is our conjugate base of a weak acid. So the weak acid here is H plus, HX, right? Now when HX loses a hydrogen, it becomes X minus. And that's what the conjugate base of a weak acid is that hydrolyzes in water to produce hydroxide ions. So now let's just look at this. We have the conjugate base X minus hydrolyzing in water to form hydroxide ions. So here we have the X minus reacting with water to form our hydroxide ion along with the acid, which is the weak acid. So basic salts are formed when a weak acid is neutralized by a strong acid. So in other words, basic salts, they have to have a strong base in them and a weak acid. So it's very clear. Now acidic salts, these salts contain a conjugate acid. So for example, HY with a plus of a weak base. In other words, this weak base has gained a proton to form HY plus that hydrolyzes in water to produce the hydronium ion. So in other words, let's just look at the reaction. We have the acid reacting in water to form the hydronium ion along with the weak, acid, weak base. So in other words, a acidic salt is formed when a weak base is neutralized by a strong, ac a strong acid. So in other words, acidic salts they have a strong acid and a weak base reacting. So it's pretty simple. So with basic salts, strong base, weak acid. With this acidic salt, it is strong acid, weak base. Now let's look at neutral salts. Here we have neutral salts formed when strong acids and strong bases react, or when weak acids and weak bases react. So it's pretty simple if you think about it. We have weak acids, weak bases forming neutral salts as well as strong acids and strong bases. Sodium chloride is made from the strong base sodium hydroxide and the strong acid hydrochloric acid. Now this is a neutral salt because both of the acid and the base are strong. So here we have NaCl which is our sodium chloride and it's got one sodium ion and one chloride ion. Now the sodium ion is from our sodium hydroxide and our chloride ion is from our hydrochloric acid. Now NaCl is in aqueous form which means there's also going to be water present. So H2O in liquid form and it produces hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. So this hydrogen ion here you can see with a plus up there now that's a hydronium ion and that's a hydroxide ion here. So let's look at sodium ions for now. We have sodium ions attracting the hydroxide ions because remember hydroxide is negative charged and sodium ions are cations positively charged. But this forms a strong base and that strong base is our sodium hydroxide that ionizes completely so ions stay in solution. In other words, what's really happening is we have these hydroxide ions from the water, if you remember back. We have water ionizing to form hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, yeah? So this is from the hydroxide ions. This is from the water and this is from our NaCl. So when they react, they would form sodium hydroxide, as you can see there. But remember that sodium hydroxide is a strong base, which means that it readily ionizes to form, again, sodium ions and hydroxide ions and it fully ionizes that means 100% ionization so this is how you would go about writing your equations you have your sodium ions reacting with the hydroxide ions from the water to form sodium hydroxide now sodium hydroxide is a strong base so it'll completely ionize again to form sodium ions and hydroxide ions 
So in other words, we're going to have these hydroxide ions in solution. So for the moment, the solution is basic. So what's making it acidic is our chloride ions. Now what happens with chloride ions is that hydrogen ions are going to be attracted to them. Remember that hydrogen ions are positively charged and our chloride ions are negatively charged. So when they're attracted, they form a strong acid and that strong acid is hydrochloric acid that ionizes completely again. So in other words, we have hydrogen ions from the water because water ionizes and then we have the chlorine, chloride ions from our sodium chloride. Now they would react to form hydrochloric acid as you can see. And when they react, they form hydrochloric acid which is a strong acid which readily ionizes. So when they readily ionize, they form hydrogen ions and chloride ions again, as you can see. Now what's really happening is our chlorine ions are going to get attracted to our hydrogen ions, forming hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid being a strong acid, readily ionizes to form the hydrogen ions and the chlorine ions. Now the hydrogen ions here, they would decrease your pH. In other words, these make it acidic, and remember our hydroxide ions from the sodium ions, yeah, the hydroxide ions makes it basic. So now we have what you call an equal concentration of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Now the concentration of the hydrogen ions equal the concentration of the hydroxide ions. So the solution is neutral now because we have an equal concentration of both. And a weak acid and a weak base will also form a neutral solution because a weak acid and a weak base only half ionizes. In other words, it's only partially ionizing. When it's partially ionizing, both hydroxide produced and the hydronium produced are going to be equal. So it's going to be neutral again as well. So in other words, when you're writing this in shorthand notation, you would say the concentration of the hydrogen ions equal the concentration of the hydroxide ions. If you remember back, I told you how square brackets means the concentration. Now let's look at an acidic salt and how that differs to a neutral salt. Now the example we're taking here is ammonium chloride. Now ammonium chloride is an acidic salt and it is formed when weak base ammonium hydroxide and the strong acid hydrochloric acid reacts together. In other words, we have an ammonium ion and a chloride ion. So here we have ammonium chloride forming the two ions. So just uh, going back, we have ammonium coming from ammonium hydroxide. And our chlorine is coming from our HCl, like that. So that makes it an acidic salt because hydrochloric acid is acidic while we have ammonium hydroxide, which is a weak base, this is a strong acid, so it's making an acidic salt. Now, again, we are going to have water in the solution because it's salt. Now, the water is going to produce hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. It's quite simple that way. Now, let's see what's actually happening with our chloride ions again. Now chloride ions, it's the same process that happened before. It's going to attract our hydrogen ions from the water and it's going to produce a strong acid, which is a hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid readily ionizes, so it'll form, again, hydrogen ions and chlorine ions. As you can see, we, we're going to have a concentration of hydrogen ions in solution. Now with our ammonium ions, the case is different. We have ammonium ions attracted to hydroxide ions in solution and they would react to form ammonium hydroxide, a weak base that is poorly ionized. So there's going to be hydroxide ions forming ammonium hydroxide. So as you can see here, ammonia, ammonium ions reacting with the hydroxide from the water to form ammonium hydroxide as you can see there. And they would produce, ammonium hydroxide is a weak base, if you remember. And what happens with weak bases and weak acids? 
is that they're not going to fully ionize. They're only going to partially ionize. In other words, they're going to be in equilibrium. So that means it's going to be in equilibrium to form ammonium ions and chloride ions. So from the two molecules of ammonium hydroxide we had, we're going to only have one molecule ionizing to form ammonium ions and hydroxide ions. So in other words, our concentration of hydroxide ions is going to be lower than our concentration of hydrogen ions. So our hydrogen ion concentration is going to be greater than our hydroxide ion concentration because we only had one molecule of, um, one molecule of hydroxide ions compared to our two molecules of hydrox hydronium ions. So that makes it a acidic salt. This leaves an unbalanced supply of hydrogen ions and so the solution is acidic. Looking at a basic salt now. A basic salt is sodium acetate. Sodium acetate is formed from the strong base sodium hydroxide and the weak acid, acetic acid. Now we have sodium, sodium ion and the acetic acid here. So what actually happens is that this is sodium acetate. It would form the acetate ion and the sodium ion. Now if you think about it, the acetate ion comes from acetic acid. Acetic acid is a weak acid. And then our sodium ion comes from sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. So a strong base and a weak acid would give us a basic salt, as you can remember. Again, we're going to have water in the solution so water is going to ionize to form hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions so as you can see water has hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions now what's in the beaker there's going to be acetate ions there's going to be sodium ions there's going to be hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions now we just have to see which one has a greater concentration the hydrogen ions or the hydroxide ions to see that this we have to consider each ion one by one so our first ion that we're going to take is acetate ions. Hydrogen ions are attracted to the acetate ions to form acetic acid. This is a weak acid and it only ionizes slightly. So in other words, our hydrogen ions are going to get attracted to the acetic, uh, acetate ion to form acetic acid like that. But remember that acetic acid is a weak acid, which means it's going to be in equilibrium which means that only partial or half of the um, a fraction of the molecules would ionize. In this case, only one of the molecules ionizes from two of them. So here we have hydrogen ion produced and an acetate ion produced, as you can see. So only one hydrogen ions per two molecules of acetate ions. Now the case is different with sodium ions because the sodium ions are now attracted to our hydroxide ions from the water forming sodium hydroxide. Now this is a strong base, so it completely ionizes. In other words, here we have our sodium ions from our sodium acetate, and we have our hydroxide ions from water. When they attract, they form sodium hydroxide, like this reaction here. And then sodium hydroxide we know is a strong base. That means it fully ionizes. So it readily ionizes into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. As you can see, this is how it goes. So in other words, we're going to have a quite high concentration of hydroxide ions compared to hydrogen ions. Like this. So our hydrogen ion concentration is going to be less than our hydroxide ion concentration. Which means this solution will contain more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions and therefore basic. So just reviewing back to what we learned, we learned about acidic salts and basic salts. And we also learned about how each of them are determined. Now looking at some questions, we have question six. Deduce whether potassium carbonate is acidic, basic or neutral and to justify your decision. So with these two, you have two key verbs. One is to deduce and the other is to justify. So you would have to first extract your information and also explain why you extracted that. So 
the first one is that it's going to be basic because potassium carbonate is made from potassium carbonate, right? Potassium is from potassium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide is a strong base. Now carbonate is from the carbonic acid. Now carbonic acid is a weak acid. So a strong base, weak acid give you a basic salt. That's why it's basic. The carbonate ion would react with the hydrogen ions in water forming hydrogen carbonate or uh, carbonic acid as there. So because of that reason, it's basic. There is only slightly ionized forming very few hydrogen ions and the potassium ions and the hydroxide ions remain as ions because so, uh, the potassium ions when they react with the hydroxide ions, they form a strong base, which readily ionizes again. So in other words, our potassium ions and our hydroxide ions are just going to stay as ions. There are not enough hy hydrogen ions avail available to neutralize the free hydroxide ions. So the salt is basic. Moving to question 7 now. Give an example of an acidic salt and describe how the salt becomes acidic using appropriate equations. Now when it says something like this, you have to always provide your equations. If not, you're not going to get full marks. So first, give an example of an acidic salt. Now the example we're going to take is ammonium chloride. So you're going to write your chemical equation formula as well because later it'll be helpful when you're writing your equation and describe how it becomes acidic. So ammonium chloride ionizes into ammonium ions and chloride ions. In other words, this is a reaction. You have ammonium chloride reacting to form ammonium ions and chloride ions. The chloride ions is a neutral ion, so it is derived from a strong acid and it does not react with water at all because it uh, when it reacts with water, it forms a strong acid, which readily ionizes. In other words, it's just going to stay as ions. But our uh, ammonium ion is acidic, as it is derived from a weak base. So in other words, ammonium ions are going to react with the water to produce hydronium ions. And the solution becomes acidic. So in other words, this is your equation for this. And you have to make sure you write the equilibrium reaction because this is why it's a base acidic salt. Here we have ammonium ions reacting with water. When it reacts with water, it's going to produce hydronium ions and ammonia gas. And this is in equilibrium because of that reason, it's an acidic salt. And that's how you would give about, go about describing your choice. Now question 8. Give an example of a basic salt and explain how the salt becomes basic using appropriate equations. We're going to take sodium acetate. Now, sodium acetate here is from a strong base and a weak acid. Sodium acetate ionizes into acetate ions and sodium ions. So, in other words, this is the reaction. Yeah, always provide your reactions. So, sodium ions are neutral as it is derived from a strong base and it is not going to react at all. But our acetate ions, they're basic because they're derived from a weak acid. So the acetate ions would react with the water to produce hydroxide ions in the solution making it basic. So the reaction here is the acetate ions with water producing hydroxide ions and are acetic acid. So this is your answer for question 8. Very similar question 7 and 8 but it's asking for a basic salt here and it was asking for an acidic salt before. So in this section we covered acidic salts and basic salts and we learned about how you can determine whether a salt is acidic or basic.